you and I know each other, uh, let's see, I think from about six years, oh my goodness, seven years back. And mm -hmm. Noemi helped my husband and I update our 1926 home, which we really love. And uh, she probably will address old homes as she speaks. Uh, and what she helped us do is bring it up to the current century, even though we did it last century. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a delight working with her. She's, um, she's a whiz at what she does. So Noemi, let me see. It's about five minutes in. I'm going to introduce you. Hi, Jonathan. Thanks for uh, joining us. Hello, Dawn. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so I'm so sorry. Um, Kathy, thanks for joining us. I uh, am Mary Ann Teixeira. I am a realtor uh, in Mid-Peninsula practicing for 15 years. I'm with Compass Real Estate and I am in the Bay uh, Area of Mid-Peninsula. And I, talking to clients and to uh, past clients and to friends, have found that there are a lot of people who are thinking, you know, I think I want to do something. I'm not sure if I want to move or maybe I just need to move down or just a lot of thoughts, but this was the thing that I found the most curious, and the most interesting. After that part of the conversation would come, but I just don't know where to start. So I thought, why don't I have some people on who could tell us how to start? And this is the first of three webinars. The webinars are Move Out, move down, stay in place. And today we're going to talk about, I love my house, I wanna stay in place, as opposed to making a smaller home or moving out of area. So for that reason, I'd like to introduce you to Noemi Abram. She is a principal at Gumbinger, Gumbinger, excuse me, Abram. Uh, she is a principal architect there. And I have invited her to give us a little bit of background about what it is that she does and how she helps people. So welcome, 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 Noemi. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. And uh, to start, can you tell us a little bit about your background, your training, your specialties? Yes, I can. Uh, thank you again for inviting me um, to participate in this series. Um, I studied architecture. I think that I was 10 years old when I said that I wanted to be an architect and I didn't have any idea of what that meant. I think that I read a book and the character was an architect and I fantasized or romanticized what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I studied uh, architecture in uh, Argentina, Buenos Aires, Argentina, where I'm originally from. Uh, then I got my master's degree in architecture at the University of Toronto, where I lived uh, for a number of years in Canada. And when, when we moved here, um, I went to Berkeley to do a refresher uh, to go for my license. And uh, through the um, California Architectural uh, Examiners Board, I became a licensed architect. Um, and uh, so that's, that's my background. And I'll... I still love what I, you know, at the very beginning, I felt that I was infatuated with, um, you know, first year of college or first year of grad school. Many decades later, I'm still, um, you know, very much uh, excited about every project that I work on. So I, I love buildings, I love architecture. And uh, through the years, I've learned to take pictures of people too, because I've only, I have only, being taken pictures of buildings, that's what I thought that it was the world about until I learned about, you know, um, you know, we are part of the world too. So I'm, I'm including us all. That's great. that's great. I didn't, I did not realize that you were a photographer. That's good to know. Uh -huh. So I, uh, for those of you that are early, you heard me say this, but I wanted to um, just give an idea of why I've asked me, let me to be here we've all been living a different life in the past year and I've spoken with a number of past clients and friends who have told me that um, 
they would like to uh, do something with their home. Um, they wanted to make it perhaps a little bit more compatible with their current needs. They love their home, but they don't want to move. And so I was wondering, Noemi, can you please share some of the types of projects that clients have asked for and how do those improve improvements help, especially for clients who plan to what we call age in place or are empty nesters? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it, it's interesting because uh, whether there is a, uh, you know, a single person, a, a young couple or a young family or uh, empty nesters, there are some, believe it or not, commonalities. Um, the, the houses, and yours was the case uh, from the 1920s, but even from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, um, up to 1980s, um, houses were designed very uh, fragmented. There was the uh, living room on one side, the dining room on the other, the foyer and the separate kitchen for cooking only and, um, and so on and so forth. Kind of uh, compartments uh, of a lifestyle that belonged to that era. Yeah. I think that we started seeing some changes in the 80s and 90s and definitely uh, for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas People don't want to have the uh, kitchen separate, uh, eating, entertaining, uh, watching a football game. Um, there, there are a number of activities that happen with, um, within an area that we call now great room. And uh, so we, as a, as a um, sort of a typical uh, scheme, uh, clients come to me and ask me, you know, I want an open floor plan. I want to be able to entertain and not be uh, in the kitchen. I want to have my family or friends having a glass of wine with us while we cook. And as we age, um, I think that having less walls, having ease of mobility, having less clatter of walls, uh, helps as, as well. So there, there are some uh, things that are common that is not just, oh, well, you know, you have to plan for when you are older or, sure. you know, th there are things that are happening now as um, typical project scope mm -hmm. that will last for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's very positive. So mostly open floor plans, uh, less fragments, uh, more um, uh, the use of eating, um, cooking, and, and uh, using your tablet or your laptop or your Zoom uh, windows uh, in the same location that you pay bills and, and you watch, you know, American Idol. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, now, regarding the scope of work, how, how do you help clients determine what needs to be done, how extensive the project should be in order to accomplish their desired outcome? Marianne, I wish to think that, uh, you know, everybody has deep pockets and their sky's the limit, but even in the cases which are very few and far in between, that there is a substantial uh, budget the majority of homeowners want to improve their homes without having to spend more than necessary. So I, uh, there is this uh, bond that, that it gets established. And you know, because uh, when, when I worked with you and Jimmy, uh, uh, there were questions that were almost too personal, you know. This, is any of you getting up in the middle of the night? You, you know, the, the, the use the, is one an early bird than the other one, uh, uh, the one who stays late. And even if you uh, live by yourself, um, you know, there are certain things that are part of the lifestyle. So I try to understand that, to, to converse about uh, lifestyle first. And then based on that, um, you know, what is it that you're missing? 
because uh, yeah, I visited some friends and I love their uh, bathroom. Well, is that what you want? Do you really use both the tub and the shower? Do you really want to do this or that? Uh, um, so I think that the, uh, the project scope gets established by um, having a list. Some people have binders, um, collect photographs or, or take uh, Pinterest uh, uh, pages and pin them. Others are, you know, I always say, you know, if you go to the dentist, we haven't gone that often this year, but there's a magazine, just feel free to tear the, that um, photograph or that uh, uh, remodel that you like. Not that you're going to copy it, but there I would converse with you and ask you, what is it that you like? It may not be the style, it may not be the colors, it may not be the materials, it may be the flow. Um, and, and, um, and I think that once the, the uh, scope is established, um, unless there is a change in life, I would say stick to it because the, the more changes, the more, you know, it costs. So I think that that's how we, I, I would handle it, um, you know, how to establish the project scope and try to manage it, manage it that way. So I hope that answers the question. It does. And you know, Noemi, as you speak, it sounds very, very similar with, to the way that I work with uh, buyers, uh, you know, just trying to determine what it is that's so important to them before we make any decisions. That's number one. And it's very personal, just as you say. Mm -hmm. Now, many of the people that are listening today might have a concern regarding the budget and the length of time to complete a project. Now, you did somewhat, but I'm going to ask you again, how do you counsel your clients about that? Is there a place that you begin? How do you go about that? Um, typically, uh, what I like to do is rather than completing the entire um, working drawings, construction drawings, documentation, architectural, structural, uh, whatever is it, uh, energy calculations, uh, submit for bill and permit, and then find out mm -hmm. that the project is way above your budget and, and doable, that's not successful for a professional to have worked on a project, to have obtained a building permit, to get paid, to, to do all the things that seem to be, okay, what else is there? A successful project is, is, is a project that gets built the way it was designed in a timely manner and to the satisfaction of the homeowner. And when somebody comes and visits, uh, will ask you, what is it that you added? because it's so well blended into the rest of the house that it looks like it was always there. But in order to get there, my recommendation, and this is, there's no one way or one size fits all, but I typically, we use in our jargon, um, initial phases, uh, preliminary design or schematic design. Uh, I usually say, you know, we can do one or two or three or four or 10 or 20. But once you decide that you like what, you, what we've come up with, I would say, let's stop. Let's stop and get some field um, you know, contractors uh, to put a number. They might not be able to give you a, a firm bid without you know, structural details or without all the specifications. But a, a knowledgeable, experienced uh, general contractor will give you a ballpark figure. And the, the benefit of that is that, okay, you, you evaluate, is that how far I wanna go? Is that enough? You know, do I have enough to cover that? And what if? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's, that's the way I prefer to counsel my, my clients because um, then we move on, we proceed with details and specifications and, and, and involving other uh, consultants as needed, um, knowing 
that you're going to be able to afford the project. And if we have to massage it, because, uh, well, you have this and you have that, but indeed we can, maybe we can value engineering it, uh, engineer it and, uh, and, and make it more to your numbers, then that's what we do. Um, as a matter of fact, Noemi, when we first started working together, uh, my husband and I had thought that we wanted to expand uh, the footprint of our home. And we did just that. You drew it up, we interviewed, a few contractors and then realized that that was more than we wanted to spend. So you went back to the drawing board and we came up, came up with something else. So yeah, for us, that truly worked. Uh, we didn't start without having a better handle on just what the cost was going to be. Thank you. Uh, so do uh, most updating projects, and I know that that's open, what does that mean? require that the clients move out during construction? And then how is that determined? And are there any workarounds? Um, well, I'm gonna start very uh, with precise uh, locations. If you're updating a bathroom, yes. uh, remodeling a kitchen, um, changing windows or adding a bay window, or raising the ceiling in the uh, family room, those are self-contained projects that would not require for you to move out of the house. Uh, what happens if you're reconfiguring, and let me explain that a little bit more because right now I'm working on a project that we're actually not adding a single square feet. Mm -hmm. We're using the existing footprint of the house but we're removing interior walls and reshuffling them. Uh, the house is on a crawl space, so relocating plumbing and ducts and pipes and things like that are not that difficult. Whereas if you were on a um, concrete slab, you have to soak out the concrete. So relocating a, a, a bathroom is not that um, difficult. Um, and in the end, reshuffling or reconfiguring, as we say, will give them a how, the house with the layout that they wanted. And, uh, and this client knew from the very beginning, because I told them, I said, you know, we're touching everywhere. It's not that we're touching the, the family room, kitchen, dining. We're touching all the bedrooms. We are changing the location of the bathrooms. And um, so they were very clear from the very beginning, they, they are fortunate enough to have um, a family member that has a condo and they are going to temporarily move there. If you don't have that situation, and most people don't, uh, having to redo the entire uh, house mm -hmm. means that uh, you have to add the expense of renting somewhere else if you don't have the possibility of living with somebody else. Uh, but it's not the only way of doing a project. Up upgrading doesn't mean that we have to remove all the walls. It may be that it, it gets open between the kitchen and the family room or between the living and the dining or things like that. Um, but as long as you have, depending on the amount of um, people who live in the house, as long as you have a bedroom or, or, or a room that behaves like a bedroom and you have a full bathroom, um, things work out. I know that when we did a remodel uh, in, in our house, um, we didn't have a kitchen for uh, probably 10 weeks. Uh, so we made up a kitchen with, you know, with a microwave and getting water from the bathroom and, and things like that. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to have uh, friends invite us uh, pity us and invite us uh, for for uh, dinner a number of times, but um, if if uh, that's the case, then you know you can sleep, you can take a shower, you can stay in the house, you can work in the house if that's what you do. So, it, it there's no I I should have said that from the very beginning. There is no not a single answer. It depends. Uh, and many times we have done um, how to go around it. What uh -huh. we have done is requested that the contractor build a temporary wall 
oh. um, in order to create a room that would, would uh, be used as a bedroom and uh, adjacent to a bathroom. And the rest of the house was, uh, or whatever else was done. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, when there was the possibility of moving into another room, um, this was finished. So there's not always, but there were ways to work around it. Yeah, I understand. And I certainly understand that there is no black and white, that it varies uh, from project to project. Right. Um, I, my attempt is just so that we can all understand better how those decisions are made. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Uh, so here's one. What, what about unexpected events and what kind of unexpected things can happen and how can those have an impact on the project? When, uh, when an architect visits a house, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we see the walls, we see the ceiling, we see the doors, we see the floor um, and the exterior and the roof, et cetera. Occasionally we can see the uh, crawl space or climb into the attic space, which typically I prefer that the structure engineer does it. But uh, the point is that we don't see things that are hidden um, inside the wall. Um, they're, um, pipes and ducts and wires and, and a lot of, uh, they're called unforeseen because there's no way that you can see certain things. So we've had a situation um, that we opened a wall that was gonna be beautifully incorporated into a great room. Mm -hmm. And we ended up finding a brick wall that was part of a, um, a fireplace or, or a, a boiler that was, uh, had been removed many decades later, but that was, they, they left the brick wall. So um, the, the point was, we were trying to open the whole thing and all of a sudden we find this uh, brick wall. We ended up incorporating it as part of the design uh, it didn't occupy the entire length of the wall. So it, it, it allowed for openness, uh, for, for the open floor plan and, and flow that the homeowners uh, wanted. And, and it added charm, which was part of the style. We wouldn't have done it in a contemporary sure. um, uh, home. And, uh, and we have found um, drains uh, that come, that were hidden from uh, roof drains that were piped inside the wall. They were not registered any place. And, um, and all of a sudden we had to relocate it. So there, there are a number of things that most of them can be uh, relocated. Yes, it's another, because it's an unforeseen situation, it adds cost. No, there, there was no way that the contractor could have priced it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's always a good idea to have a little bit of a reserve as, for contingencies. Uh, obviously, if um, if you open a wall and, or a floor and it's dry rotted, again, <clears throat> there is no way to know, uh, but it has to be fixed. Yes. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. and the contractor will not, you know, it's, it can't be expected to absorb it. So um, I think that the, the uh, the funkier or the most strange situation that I've encountered was um, raccoons, a nest of raccoons uh, <laughs> that were hidden in, uh, in a portion of, of a wall. And uh, the homeowners had heard the noise, but not enough to call their attention. And this was a room that they were not using as much. So we had to call, I don't think it was fish and wildlife, but somebody, I can't remember who, who <laughs> but it needed to be removed properly and with care. So that was a little bit of an extreme. Um, I've had the experience of having to do that with a skunk once and we called the appropriate people and they said that they were relocating the skunk to the country. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, I have been remiss as a host. If you have questions, please, you can either uh, chat 
to us or you can send a q and a i forgot to open that up but we will definitely take questions and you can filter them towards us at any time thank you i'm going to go about my next question so uh, have you seen a change in the types of projects requested in this past year because it's been an unprecedented year and has the sheltering in place made a difference in those types of projects? Uh, yes, yes. Um, the, I think that there are a lot of people, most of us have not worked from home. And um, you know, when we're home is in the evening or on weekends, and uh, we don't fully understand or appreciate the uh, functioning of the, of the house. So we've had uh, a, a lot of clients that uh, said, you know, I never knew that we didn't have enough of this or enough of that, or that the flow was such a um, complicated that we ended up uh, all, uh, you know, over each other. Um, or I didn't have a quiet space, or um, I think that it, it's been quite interesting because in addition to that, there has been uh, in, uh, the need for an office, the need for quiet space to make phone calls. Um, so there's, there's a, there are a number of, of uh, changes, but also, the opportunity that the state um, brought with changes in um, uh, legislation. Uh, I don't know if you, most of you uh, might remember when it was, uh, you know, uh, almost uh, impossible to build a cottage in any locale, whether it's San Mateo, Burlingame, uh, Hillsboro, Millbrae, Palo Alto, whatever, it was just impossible. If it was there, it was there. A lot of people build them without the benefit of permit, because of a permit, because for some reason, nobody wanted to have uh, rentals in, in properties. Well, lo and behold, uh, 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 the housing element uh, has instilled in the state the need for affordable housing if that's if it's almost an oxymoron in, in California in particular here but um, specifically what we call we used to call uh, granny or flat or second unit or a cabana or cottage now it's called accessory dwelling unit and you may have read or heard about ADUs or JADUs for junior um, the, the advantage of being able to convert an area into an ADU or build a new one is that uh, the review process differs. Uh, if you don't have the possibility of adding square footage because the house is already maxed out, well, adding uh, an ADU is feasible because the state said, says so and we can exceed uh, what is permitted as far as square footage. Um, the distance to the property lines uh, are a lot um, small used. Um, they're called setbacks. And uh, all in all um, has brought the possibility of, of um, kids, kids who come back after college having a place to live. Um, empty nesters, um, having the possibility of thinking in the future, what if I ever need a caregiver? I don't want them inside my house. I don't want them in the bedroom. I only have two bedrooms. I don't want them to occupy my, um, you know, my second bedroom. So uh, there, there are many reasons why all of a sudden 2020 became um, ignited with let's build, uh, let's design an ADU. So yes, there have been more uh, office space, quiet space and outdoor, outdoor entertaining, outdoor covered decks, outdoor trellises, outdoor porches, outdoor since we were told to shelter in place, but we could be outdoors keeping distance. So 
yeah, I definitely think that the shelter in place, the pandemic in general has affected not just our lives and the way we behave, but uh, our homes as well. And our, uh, the design world had to deal with it. So we're still doing that. Yes. Uh, Noemi, uh, we received a question that I want to make sure that we answer. What would be the estimated time frame for a major remodel where you would need to relocate? Well, uh, it, it depends. The, the advantage is during the design phase and the um, permitting for it phase, you can stay in the house for as long as you want. So um, it, it, without knowing, we can call it major remodel, um, you know, uh, doing all the, doing the kitchen or opening rooms or, or adding a second story or whatever. But without knowing the specifics, I would hesitate to give you a, a, a number. What I can tell you though, is that, uh, not until you have the project defined, the scope defined, will you know what time that is. And you wouldn't have to do it from the day one, as I said, because it takes time to do the preliminary design, to do the uh, refinement and the submittal to the municipality and the approval process. And then um, whether you're negotiating with a contractor or bidding to two or three, uh, things take time. So I would say that by the time um, you're ready to start thinking about negotiating with contractors, that's the time when you start looking for uh, a rental place. And um, it, it's, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be evasive. I just, it's too much of a generic question to say a substantial remodel. Um, for us, for each, each one of us, what we do is the greatest, uh, you know, um, uh, the most substantial because is our home. So right. um, we take it very personal. But I would say, um, you know, I six months would be reasonable uh, as far as the short time. Um, mm -hmm. But without knowing the project, I, I'm not going to give you a, a final answer. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so to the person who questioned, if you wanted to refine that and ask the question, I certainly will pitch it to Noemi. Um, I hope that helped. Noemi, let me see what else I have here. Um, well, so all of us have adapted to shelter in place and it has made some sort of difference to the way we work. Has it impacted your work and how have you dealt with it? Yes, it has. <laughs> As it was for all of us, all of a sudden, you know, we, uh, I think that it was Sunday, the 15th of March, uh, that we, that we were told that, or, or the day before, I don't know, that we were told that uh, as of Monday, the 16th of March, we were going to shelter in place. So it's not that we all have time to uh, organize ourselves and to get things from the office and so forth. All my life, I work. I went to work at the office. Um, so what I did, uh, I had some things at home, and it was hard to concentrate the the, the first week. Really, sure. uh, it was quite difficult, and I'm sure for all of you. Um, but as it was clear that it was going to be more than the three weeks that we were told. Then I went to my office and, and brought my files and brought, you know, everything that I could so I could work from home. And uh, I'm fortunate that my husband uh, is uh, knowledgeable and, and quite dexterous in installing computers and printers and, and creating all the safety for that. And, and so I, was, I started functioning from home. Never did I think for a moment that I would ever work from home. And um, I think that after three months, I thought, oh my God, why didn't I do this sooner? Uh, but again, it's, uh, you know, some of us are fortunate enough to be able to work from home. And that is 
uh, unbelievable. Uh, and, and it makes us uh, be more uh, appreciative of, and this is not just to, to sound politically correct, but you know, more appreciative about our food workers and our frontliners and everybody else who never had the luxury of working from home, uh, not even for a week. So um, I, I adapted and, uh, and um, I, technology and I have never been in first names because it's like, well, I have to use it, I'll use it. Now it's like Zoom, oh, please. Uh, what about Duo? What about WhatsApp video? What about FaceTime? And, and there's all these platforms and, and ease of communication. And um, honestly, um, I, I've been quite busy with, um, I, have, I have had clients over the years that have been my best marketeers mm -hmm. and uh, referrals from them um, became um, first a Zoom meeting and then a client. And uh, we talk, we visit, we have, I, there are people that I work with that I have designed for, that I have been um, getting paid by, you know, from, and uh, I have yet to meet in person. So um, we adapt, we adapt and luckily, you know, as long as we're healthy, I sound more like my mother than I ever did before, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> I think adaptation means survival. So yeah. that's one thing that humans are good at. Um, so again, if anybody has questions, just volley them over here. Noemi, uh, given that the audience that we have today are tuning in, I'm assuming mainly for move down, move up, stay in place. Uh, can you share why someone might make a choice that they want to stay in place and what questions should they ask to know whether that's the right choice for them? Well, uh, again, this sounds less than an architect and more like a shrink and I'm not one. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's personal. I would ask you, what is it that you love about the house? What is it? What are the things that you dislike? Do you like your neighborhood? Have how long have you been there? And have you been able to, you know, connect with your neighbors? Mm -hmm. Is this a place that you love going back every evening or every time you go out and and you can't wait to be home? Um, so there are a lot of things, and then and then there are the practical issues. Is it a two-story? How 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 is it gonna? You know what's gonna happen when we can no longer climb the stairs the way we climb them now? Uh, is there room to add one of those lifts? Uh, is there anything else that we can do? Um, you know, to stay in place. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of projects that I've done for, for clients who um, wanted to prepare for the future, but not necessarily because they're going to be disabled or in a wheelchair or uh, uh, lack the ability to walk in the house. But thinking about the future, for instance, one of the things that we have done in remodeling bathrooms is adding um, backup between reinforcement between studs. So in the future, if you want to add uh, grab bars, you can do it. It's okay. not a matter of creating an institution in your home, institutional look of a bathroom, right. uh, just in case if uh, you, know, you ever need it. It's just being practical. Mm -hmm. So um, the design is the same. I've done a number of curveless uh, showers. Mm -hmm. and, and again, not because the uh, homeowner is uh, unable to climb the four inch um, uh, curve or two inch curve, but because they like the look. Um, it, yeah. it is comfortable. And, and when we open, uh, when we have a clear open floor plan, it's not just if you're going to have uh, a Friendsgiving or Thanksgiving dinner with uh, 25 people, but it's, it's about being able to maneuver the space 
right. comfortably. Right. And, uh, and honestly, the more space, the more comfortable we feel. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it gives flexibility of furniture and so forth. So mm -hmm. I think that first of all, you have to do sort of a pros and cons as we make in life many decisions, whether it's in writing or discussing it uh, with somebody else. Don't ever um, listen to an architect who's going to tell you, yes, you should, you, should, you should remodel, or to a realtor who's telling you, yes, you should sell. Those are personal matters. It's, it's something that you know if you love the place, but you don't like this and you don't like that, then let's address it. You can remodel it and have the best of all worlds. So I hope that it wasn't too confusing. That's sound advice. And it, it sounds very much that the way that you practice uh, your business and the way that I practice, uh, very similar. I mean, really, it's people, right? That's what makes our business. And uh, for you, your job is to find what's the most practical uh, and is going to please the client. And that's absolutely true for me as well. I have uh, no more questions. If anyone would like to ask a question, now is your time. Noemi, is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, no, I think that I'd like to make myself available if you want to share my email address is probably the I best will, way of communicating. I'll do that, um, I'll do that I, right I, now. It, again, I think that um, for most of us, our homes are, are our greatest assets and not just in uh, numbers or in, in uh, financial uh, terms, but in, uh, in emotions, in memories, in um, how do we relate to each other, to friends, to family, how we welcome people um, to our homes. And uh, there are people who entertain all the time and there are people who are um, you know, the home is for them to enjoy and there's no one way of doing anything. I think that the same uh, floor plan can be redesigned numerous times and that's usually my, my challenge and my um, trigger to get really excited. Um, but the, you don't have to do it all, uh, absolutely not. And uh, sometimes minimal touches will make the house exactly what you know, you've been wishing for. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being there. I know that we all have a little bit, we're all zoomed out um, or, or over zoomed, but uh, it's nice to uh, converse or to be a, of um, use. Um, I, I like to think that architects um, are problem solvers is not just, um, design and creativity. Sometimes reconfiguring a space is more like a puzzle than, than an actual uh, um, function of talent and, and creativity. So um, thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, Marianne. Uh, it's always a pleasure to um, converse with you. And, uh, and thank you for giving me this platform to connect with people. Thank you. And I just want to share with you one comment we get we uh, got, and then I will share Noemi's contact information. Um, this participant says, thank you. I appreciate the information. You've started the wheels turning for me. We are currently debating staying or go because of some neighborhood development. So there we go. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you everyone here for uh, participating today. I am going to, oh, someone's raising their hand. Hold on one second here. Uh, you would think I'd be better at uh, Zoom after all the practice I've got here. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. That was the comment, actually. So I'm going to share uh, the information with uh, Noemi's information right now, if I can possibly do that without my assistant nearby. And uh, here we go. And Noemi, thank you so very much. Uh, we appreciate your time. and. If you have more questions, here's the contact uh, for Noemi.
And uh, thank you. We will talk again. Thank you once again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Looking forward to chatting with you soon. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Goodbye all and thank you so much for coming to participate today and come join us next week and the week after we will be talking about and interviewing people who will help you move if you've lived in your house 20 years or more or even five and then the following we're going to be talking to various realtors out of area. Take care and thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Bye bye.